What's going on guys, Ronanut44 back with you again for another video for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we are taking a look at the Microd MXA Amphibious Aircraft. And you may be saying to yourself, well didn't you just review this aircraft a little while back? And to that I answer, yes, yes I did. <laughs> so then you may ask, well Ronanut, why are you reviewing the aircraft again? you've already done a video on it before and the plain and simple answer is this isn't the same aircraft it is but it isn't you know kind of like Schrodinger's cat <laughs> it both is but it also isn't no this is the Microd MXA but let's call this a redux because that's exactly what it is. So, <laughs> long story short, um, Microsoft Flight Simulator Sim Update 7, the latest hotfix, completely broke all of the legacy FSX code. This was intentionally done by Azobo to phase out the old XML code for animation variables and such. But in doing so, it pretty much broke a lot of add-on aircraft because a lot of add-on aircraft used this legacy code and hadn't adapted to Zobo's updated code structure yet. And unfortunately, the same thing happened to the MXA, as well as Microd's MX-1 and Fokker DR-1 triplane. And the biggest issue here was the throttle. The legacy code put in place for the throttle operation was broken. <laughs> and... This meant that the throttle didn't work at all, no matter if you tried to drag it, if you tried to use a slider, or if you tried to use a, um, you know, any other axis, such as a, a, you know, a throttle quadrant to work it. Not, nothing worked. The throttle just didn't work at all. Everything else functioned. Avionics would come on, aircraft would start, but yeah. So, <laughs> so basically in response to this, Micro took four days and completely rework this aircraft pretty much from scratch. For those of you that have flown the previous MXA model, you'll notice right off the bat some huge modeling changes here in the cockpit, and the number one change is <laughs> the floor. We now have a floor, a flat, solid floor. You want to experience true level? Do you? <sighs> yes? <laughs> And uh, the other model obviously didn't have that. It was just a continuous kind of boat hole inside. Um, but yeah, the uh, the modeling is quite nice. A little bit different than the other. For the most part, everything is laid out pretty much the exact same. Canopy can open up. I do not remember if it opened up in the previous version, but you can open it up now as well as you can mess with the vents and actually both vents are controlled at once I'm not sure if that's intentional or not but yeah you can click and drag around the vents throttle is confirmed working flight controls move as well as the rudder pedals test the toe brakes Oops, our parking brake is on. Uh, not sure. So there's no animation for tow brakes. There's a parking brake slider. Which doesn't appear to be... connecting to the key binding. Actually, I think I remember reading something about that. I think that is a known bug right now. I do not believe the parking brake uh, key binding is hooked up. But rest assured that will likely be fixed in an upcoming update. But you know what? Being on the ground's no fun. Let's get this thing fired up. Let's get up in the air and we'll talk a little bit more about this aircraft. Let's get our canopy closed. Love that. <laughs> um, wrong switch. Master comes on. Avionics come on so we can have engine data. We will go ahead and get our strobe lights on. 
we don't really have a beacon. And fuel pump comes on. Do not believe there's a fuel selector. No, there is not. And start her up. Now, mind you, this is the first flight I have done in this new version of the aircraft so far, so <laughs> anything that happens, we will be experiencing it together. All right, so we are started up. Let's get positioning and landing position and landing lights on. Um, there's no click spot on the flat position or the gear up. So that's a couple more things we can bring up to my crowd. We do not need keto heat because, well, oh, we'll go ahead and turn it on because this play is going to yell at me if we don't. We are in the Bahamas. And where are we at? No, no, seriously. Where are we at? <laughs> I don't remember. I just clicked on an airport. <laughs> M-Y-A-M is where we are at. Well, we're here. Uh, I think we use 1200 code in the Bahamas. We're going to turn it to Alt and Enter. And besides that, we're not going to do any more. It's down off on the... I can't remember if down is off on the parking brake or what. I guess we'll find out here in a second. We're going to take off the pushback cart dude's head here in a second because he's in the way. And we're not moving, so parking brake must be enabled. Light up. There we go. Now we're moving. Take off this guy's head. Bonk. <laughs> A little bit more than the head. And, uh, yeah. Let's take her nice and easy here, because, like I said, there's been major changes to the aircraft, the flight model, and what the hell happened there. This looks very similar to a situation that Micro posted up in chat the other day. Crazy stuff happening in Microsoft Flight Simulator, that's for sure. And where are we? Because I can't see anything. <laughs> okay, runway is straight ahead. It is very, very bright out today. And we're just going to ease into the brakes here, because I remember last time it tilted forward. And that is supposedly supposed to be kind of resolved this time around. All right. Check on the left side, nobody coming. Check on the right side, nobody coming. The view is stuck. That's one other noteworthy thing. But you know what, all in all, not bad for a re-release of an aircraft. If you think about it, you're pretty much like starting from zero when you rebuild something. Anything you might have fixed or patched in the previous releases, if you can't remember to do it, and the new release, well, it just becomes a bug that you gotta fix eventually. But even if they don't get fixed, it's not like it's show-stopping bugs, you know? And that was, I believe, the main goal of Microd when he did this Redux, was to make an aircraft that hopefully lasts more than a couple more months of Azobo changes. All right, heels down to the floor, let's give her some power, bring the tail up. We are not on center line, but eh, you know, who cares? Full power. Back on center line. A little bit upward trim, and we lift off. We'll keep the gear down for now. Alright, we can no longer make the runway, so gear is coming up. Gear animation on the lever does work, so that's good news. And reduce power just a little bit here. We're heading out to the marsh area here. We're just going to kind of fly around and maybe do a couple of splashes. 
see what the water physics are like on this now. Let's take a look at the outside view while we're here. Aircraft is beautifully modeled. Micro does some amazing work. But in fact, the whole team at Godfriends does some amazing work. But this aircraft here is the work of Microde and 270 Inc. from what I can remember. Those are at least the guys I was hanging out with. So Microde on this side and we won't be able to see the other side until we shut the engine down. But I think it's got a little uh, little tribute to Got Friends and I think 270 is on there as well. Right. Oh, that's uh, another thing that I think is a little bit different. The displays here, I believe both of them had primary flight displays on the previous version. Now it's got the primary flight display and map, which is a welcome change because, yeah, I mean, you don't really need a primary flight display on that side. And I think you can, uh, well, you can't do the split view. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> it works for what it is. I'd rather have a map on that side anyways. I'm not going to be flying from the right seat anytime soon. Unless, of course, I'm back in a helicopter, then, yeah. Obviously, that we're flying from the right-hand seat. Unless we're in a bell. Then we're in the left-hand seat. Alright, we're out here over the marshy area. Let's find a very bad spot to land. <laughs> no. We'll find an appropriate spot to land. Actually, let's see... Everything kind of looks the same. I don't know how this thing's going to behave in the water, so I want a decent run of water. Plenty of area to turn around if I need be. This area over here is kind of cluttered. Let's take a look back over here. I think over here... Off the right-hand side here is going to be our best bet. We'll just keep a churn coming around here. Get some more airflow on me. <laughs> so the entire virtual cockpit has been, like the rest of the aircraft, completely redone. All the texturing work has been done by 270 Inc. He's done a wonderful job. Seats, the stitching on the seats. Everything is hand painted and substance 3D painter. And yeah, it just it turned out immaculate. I have no complaints about anything. And we even get an armrest. I don't remember if the other model had an armrest or not. But we got an armrest now. Alright, let's start throttling back. And I think this little bay area here is going to be our landing zone. So, let's take a look, maybe from that little island right there, with kind of the beach area, maybe we overfly that, and kind of land down that straight right there. So let's set up for that for right now. I still do think the view is maybe a little too low. It points down a little bit too much, or at least for my comfort level. I like my view up a little bit higher. I like to see a little bit more sky. And there's not really any need to see the tops of the rudder pedals, you know. But, like, right there underneath the displays is pretty good for me. Even if it came up a little bit more, you know, I wouldn't complain. Maybe something like that. Something where you can still see basically everything, but... You can see plenty of view out in front of you as well. It's the airport there in front of us. Let's take a peek out left-hand side, and we're going to go ahead and start our turn. And crap, I forgot the view's locked. <laughs> Can't use the hat switch right now. Okay, hey, we're going to put our first notch flaps down. Got two notches of flaps to work with here. Let's 
Looks like an Asha Flaps coming down. And as we slow up, we'll start feeding in a little bit more power to get our landing attitude set. We are doing a very glassy water landing. There's a little bit of ripple action going on down there, but still, it's fairly glassy. So we'll kind of set our attitude the best we can. Aim for that straight ahead so we know we got plenty of water runway. We're a little nose low on our attitude right now, but we'll round out here very shortly. Let's keep this power setting in. Speed in a little bit of upward trim as we come down. Our airspeed is going to continue falling off. Keeper up just like this, and eventually we should settle right down onto the wall. Or stall, whatever comes first. This seems like it may be a stall. Come on, baby. Touch the water. There we go. We'll go ahead and go to throttle zero. And we're going to push the nose forward just a little bit, try to null out the bumps. Flaps are coming up, let us sink down into the water a little bit better. I'm not as used to flying bolt hole, boat hole style aircraft. So usually I want to pull back. But that makes us kind of bounce. Maybe we'll keep her pulled back here. What's the tail doing? We're just kind of hopping along, aren't we? Yeah. I think this is about as slow as we're going to get. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of a turn here. She does turn nicely. I'm not even using any water rudder right now. Oh, and in case you're wondering about the weather preset, we are using the Do Not Be On Fire, or ENBOF, I think as, he, as he's called on FlightSim.to. This is the atmospheric preset, the same preset that we are using in New Zealand. Because, well, I just like this preset. <laughs> All right, let's continue our turn and get back on heading. We're not going to get any slower, so we're just going to go right for a takeoff. Let's go flaps one, and let's see how she takes off. A little bit of forward trim. Oh, she rides very nice once you get her up on plane. You know, it's it's kind of weird. You know, this is I, I should kind of preface this by saying this is the only bolt hole aircraft that I have. I don't have any, like the Widgeon or well, I guess I have the Goose, but I don't really fly it because it's broke right now with the water physics, or at least last time I checked it was. Um, but it's weird because an FSX, you know, the standard like pontoon or amphibious float aircraft. They handled okay, right? And then the boat hole aircraft handled like absolute crap. You know, I can I never had a real good experience with boat hole aircraft in FSX. But in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's kind of flipped. It's kind of like the boat hole aircraft actually play nice with the water physics, and the regular just float, you know, straight float or uh, amphibious aircraft bounce the freaking hell. So. Kind of a uh, interesting twist there. So I actually had the pleasure of kind of hanging out with Mike Road and 270 while they were working on this aircraft, and I gotta say the it just actually sitting down and watching these guys work on this aircraft gives me a whole new appreciation for just the level of detail that goes into these aircraft or into these projects in general. 
These guys do absolutely fabulous work, and like I said, this was done in like four days. Literally, it entirely redone in four days, and this is the result. I couldn't make this in a month. <laughs> and I do 3D modeling, just not on this scale. I'm more of an architectural 3D model because I do scenery, right? So a little bit different. Kind of the same, uh, kind of the same general aspect, but yet quite a bit different at the same time. We're going to go ahead and start making our way back to the airport here. I'm going to try landing on those landing gear <laughs> and see how that works out for me. I will have to try some uh, aggressive braking action at some point here because supposedly the flight model has been kind of reworked so that it doesn't fall over on its nose quite as much. <laughs> if you remember from our last video, just breaks a little bit of a check here, make sure our brakes are working. Oh crap. Yeah, that happened about, you know, I, I said a couple of seconds. It was like a it was like a minute or two after I started recording. But still, like, from the time we started moving, a couple of seconds in, and I put the damn thing on its nose. How about that? <laughs> so, yeah, we'll try to do a little on purpose this time recreation and see what happens. I did notice while we were braking there on the ground, just kind of taxing around, that it did seem like it won the creep forward, or, you know, tilt forward a little bit. But maybe not quite as bad as it was before. Because before it pretty much just, when it went, it went. But uh, this time around, we'll see. Maybe it's a little bit more gentle, a little bit more controllable. And, you're, you know, you're not slamming on the brakes, or you're not supposed to be slamming on the brakes when you're trying to stop, anyways. You don't want to lock up the brakes because then you damage your tires, right? Well, and. Technically, your brakes, too. <laughs> Alright, so we are not flying a proper <laughs> pattern entry at all. We are kind of a less than 45 <laughs> entry into the downwind while overlapping the upwind. Yeah. But you know what? There's nobody else out here, so who cares? Alright, let's go ahead and get the power out. I guess I had flaps 1 down that entire time. Well, that would explain a lot. I do like how this aircraft flies. It flies really nice. It's nice and smooth on the controls. So it feels a little heavy. But you know, I mean, I like heavy. You know, I don't like 747 heavy. But <laughs> I like a little heavy on the controls. It gives you a little bit of force feedback and makes you actually feel like you're pushing against the air and, you know, actually flying an aircraft. That's the biggest uh, biggest downside the flight simulation is, well, there's not really any force feedback like there is in the real aircraft. So you can have things set up, you know, physically, or physics-wise, not physically, physics-wise, you can have things as accurate as possible in a flight model, and really, you know, it all comes down to your controls, and ultimately, at the end of the day, if there's no force feedback, it's not going to feel right anyways. Let's get the gear down, get the flaps down to full. Turn a very short base here. See how we line up. I didn't even look out the window. Yeah, we're overlapping a little bit. Well, that sand is very bright around the runway. Get the power all the way out. I'm going to roll in a little bit of upward elevator trim here. Just to help us on the round out, take a little bit of pressure out of our controls. 
And we got plenty of runway, so we're not going to force her down or anything. We'll just continue. And we'll round out. A little bit more trim as we do so. Let's see if we can put her on the center line. You know what, we're going to keep the tail up just a little bit here to maintain control. And once it feels like she's ready to fall down, right about here, go ahead and we'll pop her on the ground. And we'll just ease into the braking here. I feel like we definitely went past our taxiway. We'll find another. <laughs> to the outside view. Uh, yeah, we went past our taxiway a little bit. But you know what? Let's just pop a Yui here on the runway. We're actually going to turn to the left, but I want to have plenty of room to turn around, so we're going to go to the right side of the runway. Alright, after landing checklist, i turn the landing light off, we'll get the position light off. Technically, I should be doing this while we're off the runway, but I have multiplayer and live traffic turned off, so <laughs> there's literally nobody else here to signal to anyways. Well, except for the AI traffic, but they're kind of dumb anyways. Alright, just past the hold short. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and turn our fuel pump off. Turn our pedo heat off. Hit it, pedo. Hit it. Potato. Um, something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, we're good. Let's taxi back to the ramp, shall we? Alright. We should probably be on the lookout here. I'm not sure if we got a rampy waiting on us or not. I don't see anybody waiting on us, but uh, just kind of over there doing their own little thing. Alright, that's okay. We'll park ourselves. Maybe if we don't take out all the other aircraft doing so. Uh, there may be another little issue. Tail wheel does not animate. Oh well. <laughs> it's aesthetics. Not functionality. Oh yeah, um, by the way, while we're at it, break and check. Uh, a little bit of a pop forward, but definitely not as bad as it was before. So I love that. All right, going over here. Parking brake set, and yeah, we'll go ahead and leave our strobes off. I'm not sure why the glare shield light was on. Maybe I turned that on. Interesting. Go T switch doesn't work. Fuses don't do anything. That's all right. Don't need those anyways. It's not like they function or anything. Uh, heat fuel pump is off. Rudders full back, water rudders up, working brake. Gonna open that up. I don't think that hits the uh, yeah, 
no, that's far enough for it. Go and get the avionics off. We don't need those. And there is no mixture, so I guess we turn the key off. And master batter comes off. And if we take a look at the key here, you've got a friend of me. Ponage to got friends. And since our battery's off, we can flip our key around. It does animate. It says microde on this side. I thought they talked about putting junks on there as well, but maybe they didn't end up doing that. Maybe the uh, little message here for got friends is all it took. <laughs> Anyways, another aircraft taxiing around. Yeah, overall, I'm pleasantly surprised. I definitely was not expecting a rework of this aircraft. And, you know, as far as I kind of mentioned about the other aircraft being broken as well, the MX-1 and the uh, Fokker, DR-1. Yes, it is Fokker. It's not Fokker. <laughs> uh, yeah, those were both broke as well, I believe, on the throttle. And... From what I've heard, he does plan on, Micro does plan on updating those. So, you know, whether or not they get a full-on redux like this one did, I'm not really sure. But at least we should probably expect that those issues, you know, the, the sim breaking issues are going to be addressed. And, you know, this is kind of like the farewell update for these aircraft. Now, I don't know if... I was on the fence about putting this part in the video because I don't know if, you know, if, if Micro had really wanted this out there or not. And I, I would assume he's okay with this. But, because it's inevitable, right? It's inevitable that eventually you're going to have to stop supporting something. So this is basically like the farewell update for these aircraft. You know, these updates will hopefully get these aircraft to a point where they should work and definitely moving forward and address any small issues that need to be taken care of. But, you know, past that, right now, you know, Micro is a part of the Got Friends development group now. They're working on their own projects, as well as a ton of other freeware aircraft that are going to be coming out as well, which I'm not going to mention. You guys will have to figure those out or find the uh, appropriate discords to you know, pry for yourselves. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thanks for joining me on this video. This has been... A pleasure flying this aircraft again. It was a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to have to take this up again. Get some more flight time in it. Anyways, guys. This has been Rotornet44. Bringing you yet again another flight simulation video. And you know what? I feel like we left it on a good note. This aircraft's amazing. Go download it. It's out now on flightsim.to. And everybody have a fabulous day. <laughs> Rotornet44. Over and out.